the Allite Universal Magnetic Cell Charger Take 2 because Take 1 went so wrong in so many different ways. It started off with an attempt to get it out, the packaging just went so wrong. It's like they got the person who designed the packaging for SD memory cards to design the packaging for this and they went to town on how to make packaging you just can't get stuff out of. So yeah, that wasn't fun. Then I measured the current by passing lead through the clamp meter set to DC current. And I was getting erroneous readings, and of course, I, I completely forgot. This uses a Hall Effect sensor. So if you set it to DC current, let's, uh, let's get a close-up on this, actually. If you set this to DC current and you calibrate it out, zero out, then as soon as I brought the magnets near it, if you watch the current reading, uh, it skewed the results because it uses these, you know, uh, a static magnetic field to actually measure the current flowing through the wire. So if you smack the thing right on, it's going to go up quite high, or if even nearby, it's going to go quite high. It also makes me wonder, well, it is leaving residual magnetism. I wonder if you, you can degauss these. I wonder if that's a good idea. I might actually try that. So um, let's uh, not use this because it's not suitable for this task owing to the presence of magnets. Let's uh, zoom back out a bit here. So what can I use to me measure it? I shall simply stick a meter in series. I'll use this meter and I shall set it to DC current. So what this device is, it's got these magnetic clips and if you get a battery, single cell, and you stick one on each end, it doesn't just detect the uh, polarity, but it also detects the voltage. And from that, it sort of works out what type of battery it is. If it's in the region of about one volt or so, it knows that it's probably a nickel metal hydride or a nickel cadmium. I would guess that if it turned out that it was a um, lithium cell and the voltage started going up very quickly, um, it would probably cut back uh, and probably cut off, maybe. I'm not sure if it's got the intelligence, intelligence to detect that. Um, but it detects uh, standard lithium cells and it detects nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium type cells. And I have to mention at this point that it does not know the difference between a standard lithium cell, the conventional technology that charges up to 4.2 volts, and the modern life PO4 lithium ferrous phosphate cells, which have the lower voltage, you can't put one of them on it because it will just misinterpret it as being a generic lithium cell and will try to charge it to 4.2 volts, which is too much for those uh, cells. So let's uh, find out what happens. We plug it in and uh, I've set this to the DC current and we shall stick it. Well, let's find out what I first start. What happens if I just short it out? So at the moment it's drawing, let's uh, zoom up just a little bit. At the moment it's drawing about 30 milliamps. I short it together, bumps up to about 40 milliamps, then back down to 30 milliamps again. Okay. Uh, what would happen if I just shorted out the meter? This is a, also a good test. I don't think it's going to do an awful lot because it's looking for voltage before it starts to charge. Oh, that thing has just cut off because it's not detecting a load. Not helpful. So let's uh, put this on here and this on here. No, I think it's checking, but it's not seeing anything. Okay, so it's not going to try charging. So now let's uh, try a nickel metal hydride cell. So I'll pop that connection on there. I shall connect the positive to here and this to here. Is everything in the shot here? Yes, it is. And it charges about 250 milliamps for the nickel metal hydride cell. It's also notable that on the red LED display, the actual the USB output, <coughs> it's showing a current of 150 milliamps, which suggests it does have a buck regulator in it to actually efficiently convert down instead of trying to do it by just acting as a variable resistance, so to speak. So what happens if I stick in a lithium cell now? So let's say uh, this lead is going to be the positive. And it's not doing anything. If I get a bad connection here, I may have a bad connection. Let's try that again. Or is this cell fully charged? I don't think it's fully charged. Kind of not doing anything, is it? 
Oh no, the current is now ramping up. I, I think it was just monitoring. I think it was just testing the cell. And now it's ramped up to about 700 milliamps, which is what it's kind of rated at. And it's close. It's showing about 700 milliamps in the USB power supply because the difference between the 5 volts to the roughly 4 volts that will be going out to this is so close that the current will be similar. Okay, so opening it up. Now, the fact that I screwed up the first time round of this video is advantageous. Because it, I already I got as far as opening it up. Now another thing went wrong in the the earlier version. I misused the zoom. I just I've got zoom greedy these days, and uh, I zoomed out far too much. I zoomed in far too much, and ended up just completely. The meters were just off the display, and I didn't I didn't look at the screen. I didn't twig that. But anyway, let's. Uh, it meant uh, so I've had it open. Uh, I'll show you how it does open. It's a plastic case, a metalized plastic case. And it's just held with four pins, one at each corner, one of which I've already broken, but that's okay. And inside is a fairly complex little circuit board. It's worth mentioning that it does have a light, but it's actually two little LEDs. Uh, I'll, I'll zoom back in. I can justify zooming in here. Let's focus on that. Uh, it's got two little LEDs, and they make the sort of cable gland glow. But um, having said that, you know, what you really want to see here... And I can, uh, I'm going to zoom back out again because I'm bringing in the big boys here. I'm bringing the pictures. So on one side of it is an inductor. And what might be the transistor switching that? And one of these diodes is probably um, the converter diode. Here's the two LEDs. Each LED contains a red and a blue LED. There's an anonymous 8-pin chip. There's two of these diodes. Not quite sure what each is doing. It's quite hard to follow out because I get the feeling there's a lot going on under this inductor. And it's glued down. There's glue everywhere. That's why that uh, number in that chip is slightly obscured. Here's the USB connector. The data pins do not appear to be connected. That's good. Um, and really, the 5 volts comes in and gets converted by this inductor to uh, charge the uh, battery once you've uh, processed it. But... The other side is somewhat more complicated. It's absolutely smothered in transistors and things. Uh, W2A, not sure what they are. I recognise the 1AM. It's a very standard transistor. I'm guessing that because it can detect the polarity and swap it, it might have an H-bridge. Not sure. Um, it's got two, what I guessed were MOSFETs. And I checked it up. The number on them is F42A. Is this focused correctly? Yes, it is. I think it's focused correctly. Uh, F42A, and I went online, and all I could find was a TOB listing which said, brand new original F42A FET knee slappers. So, um, knee slappers. I'm not sure what has happened in the translation here. Uh, but they appear to be MOSFET-based knee slappers that are knee slapping the output to the battery. Um, right. And certainly the configuration of the... It looks... I wonder if these are just in parallel switching the current. I'm not really sure. Are they actually switching the inductor on the other side? What's that uh, little cluster? This is where, you know, it'd be quite handy if, again, you can't really see because so much is covered by this inductor. It really hides a lot of what's going on in the double-sided PCB. But it's complicated inside. Initially, when I saw these, I thought, well, they're quite expensive because I thought... They were just going to be based on something like this. Now, this is a wee cheapy thing that you can buy for charging the old school phone batteries, you know, like the Nokia batteries. And it's a universal device. It's got these adjustable contacts that can slide in and out. And the idea is that you slide them to match the contact space in the battery. Then you jam the battery and it goes against those contacts. And then you just pop this out the back and it goes into a USB port. And it's also got a SD, mini SD card uh, holder just for extra function. And the idea is it detects the polarity and charges the, the battery. And it means that, you know, it's a great little emergency charger because you don't have to worry about polarity. You don't have to worry about battery contact spacing. It can charge most of those flat batteries with the little gold contacts in the end. So I thought it was going to be something like that, but it clearly isn't. It's much more complicated. Much I'd love to trace this circuit out, that is the scuppering bit is that inductor hiding so much in the back. And the fact it's a really complex circuit. It's really surprisingly complex, um, much more so than I was expecting. But, um, it's a neat enough device. 
the magnetic contacts, there's nothing new about the magnetic contacts, but it's a nice application, and it does seem to be smart enough to know when they're just shorted together. And it means that, you know, no matter what nickel uh, cell, nickel uh, cadmium or nickel metal hydride, you could go AAA, AA, C or D, I'm guessing, although it might at 250 milliamps for the... Uh, NICADs or nickel metal hydride, which I'm guess is a, guessing is aimed at the triple A's because they've got quite a, you know, you can't really charge them at too high a current. Um, but uh, they've got the lower current. Uh, this is the higher current. For lithium cells, it's a much higher current. And it means that, you know, uh, it's just a handy, compact charger for most of these types of cells. Uh, so it is a neat little design. Uh, it's neat indeed. The case is that sort of, it looks metal when you first look at it, uh, but it is metalised plastic with recesses cut out into it for uh, the inductor to go into. It's all pretty much, you know, a lot of design work has gone into this. Um, I will say the gland does not light very brightly. In a dark room it might be more visible, but certainly in, at the bench I had to shield it to see if it was glowing. It would have been nicer to have even just a little port with an LED pointing up the way, but I guess they were just going for the stylishness of having the cable gland light up. But it's a neat little device. I wonder if there is any self-discharge. That's something that's worth checking, isn't it? Is it going to discharge a uh, cell? So let's put this to the lower current setting. Let's put it to... 200 milliamps initially and connect it and see what happens oh it's got a wee it's got a fairly it's almost 1 milliamp so you don't want to leave this connected yeah let's say 1 milliamp you don't want to leave it connected when uh, it's not uh, charging because it will gradually drain the cells that's worth knowing um, so yeah interesting device makes mental note to stick lead back to the uh, standard settings and away from the current settings I mention that every time usually uh, if you leave your meter in the current settings it's effectively a dead short and if you forget that and you go to measure a voltage you'll just short things out and blow the fuse in the meter so it's worth mentioning that that applies to all meters um, except the ones with the uh, good protection in them uh, that uh, in place of the standard fuse but yes yeah, it's a neat enough device the uh, all eight uh, universal charger.